dawn of the second day. 14 different viewpoint characters? That's gonna be one per chapter, isn't it? No. This is gonna get exhausting. Yes, I guess we know who we're gonna be hearing from for the next seven weeks. Maybe. But before we get to that, thank you to my patrons! Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, Meethy Carone, Gallant Aegis, the son of James, and welcome to the club, Lexar and Talap! One person, two names, it's not uncommon, apart from the and. Welcome and thank you! Chapter 14. The epigraphs are back to the Way of Kings. Yo dog, I heard you like Way of Kings, so I put the Way of Kings in your Way of Kings. Things, it would have gone poorly, Dalinar. If you had died instead of Gavilar, it would have gone poorly. The mention of Dalinar's grandfather's Takama with its twice-wrapped belt is a reference to the story in Oathbringer of Dalinar's Swordmaster's Swordmaster, who was a shorty and had to tie it three times. We can't just assume that because something is old, it is right. Also, the straining leather strap on the verge of snapping, lots of allusions to past tradition and paranoia. And then, news from a Windrunner. I wonder what it could be. Jump to Yasna with a reading we've actually seen before, though not much significant has changed. Wit visits other places at night, leaving his physical self in place while his cognitive self roams the Cosmere? That sounds tricky. Trickier than finding a comfortable position on a too soft bed. Brandon said the sex word! Yasna expects Dalinar to face Odium himself. I'm still not sure if that's actually going to be what happens. Another reference to her madness when she was young. I doubt we'll be getting any answers as to what that was until the second half of Stormlight. Yasna's supposed to be more of a main character there, with her flashbacks planned on being in book 10. Wit remembers, or at least recognizes not remembering, and a lot of things happen at once. Allomancy, sand mastery, awakening, probably somehow breath manipulation, changing his physical form like a returned, or just messing with connection to make his body think it's a lethe. That would also be how Gera did it. He explains to Yasna how and why he stores memory in breath, used to expand his soul, and he found a missing 3 minutes and 27 seconds. He realizes wacky things are happening with race. Yup. And she realizes she'll never be able to truly have a relationship with him. Yep. News from Shadesmar, and a meeting coming up. We knew Wit isn't on speaking terms with Cultivation, so instead he's going to contact an old friend? That's an incredibly short list, so who do you think it could be? Now to Navani, exploring the HVAC of Eurythiru. She and the sibling discuss the limits of Tower Light, and that apparently she doesn't need to sleep? Bronze compounding, jealous! She sees a keen spren, which according to Brandon may be a nickname for one of the radiant spren. What order? Navani should have seen all of those by now, so maybe not. Whatever they are, they don't like gardens. Flip to Fen. Golly, are we just getting all of the different characters out of the way immediately? Two sex references in one chapter? Brandon! She gets word of the assault from Shadesmar, but also the Skybreakers just destroyed the blockade of Yakaved. Someone's gotta hammer that nail. It seems the loophole Odium is exploiting is that he gets to keep whatever he's won, so might as well try to win it all. Unless there's more. There's more. Getting to Gox, who is definitely sleeping, except that he's about to get invaded by more than just the random people in his bedroom. So, he's awake. It's rare to get that many viewpoint shifts in a not Sanderlanch chapter. Though I suppose this book could basically be the Sanderlanch of the whole first arc. Chapter 15. The chapter headings have gotten crumblier. Going back to the prologue of the Way of Kings, all the chapter arches have been the same, of course varying in the faces of the heralds, but the structure, all the way up to the second interlude last week, has been identical. Little crack at the top left, smaller one on the bottom right, but now it's this. Subtly warning us that it's all going to come crashing down? Are we going to get new chapter arches for the second arc? Maybe with images of some more familiar faces instead of the heralds? As the heralds? Adolin learns the glory of showering. That would have been nice after shatting in your shard plate. I wonder if it's as good as the Elantra sweet shower. Nobody's crying yet, so probably not. Another sexy time? Brandon, what has gotten into you? Shallan going after Mraz is gonna have to wait. It's also kinda nice to see that Adolin is not over the death of his mom. There was a lot of pushback in the fandom about the lack of outburst we got from him. Though it seems like it was just festering. Hopefully it doesn't do that too much. Dalinar gets another 
report from Sigzil. There's a huge force of Fused pushing towards the Shattered Plains, including a Thunderclast. I hope we'll be getting a Venli or Leshwi POV in the coming days, cause that'd be sweet. Chasm Veen versus Thunderclast. And out comes Gavinor. Poor kid. I wonder why he's being brought up again. And then, Cultivation! She may not be on speaking terms with Hoyd, but she's got a relationship with Dalinar, that's for sure. It seems things are definitely starting to pick up in day two. If you want a chill place to talk about it, join my Patreon and my Discord. Otherwise, Brandon's children's book comes out tonight! If you're going to the release event, we'll see and hang out! And an and person. I guess the and is common.